thought we should take this walk together. And um, one of the things I wanted to talk about was what it means for us to take a walk together. When I first asked you about this, um, you told me you take walks, you take strolls. I do. And can you say something about um, what that is for you? When do you do it and how do you do it? And what words do you have for it? Well, I think that I, I always go for a walk, mm -hmm. probably every day every I go day. for a walk. Um, and I always tell people that I'm going for walks. I use that word. And most of the disabled people who I know use that term also. Which environments make it possible for you to take a walk? I moved to San Francisco largely because it's the most accessible place in the world. Yes. And part of what's so amazing to me about it is that the, the physical access, the fact that the public transportation is accessible, there's curb cuts most places. Almost most places I'll go, there's curb cuts. Buildings are accessible. And what this does is that it also leads to a social acceptability, that somehow because, because there's physical access, there's simply more disabled people out and about in the world. And so people have learned how to interact with them and are, are used to them in yes. a certain way. And so the physical access actually leads to um, a, a social access yeah. and acceptance. It must be nice not to always have to be the pioneer. Yes, right? The very definitely. first one they definitely. Made. First to disabled explain, person they've ever seen. And, and then, yeah. Yes, I do, you know, speak and think and talk and move and yes. enjoy life and suffer many of the same heartaches that you do. And anyway, um, but what I'm wondering about is um, moving in social space, right? Mm -hmm. Moving all the movements you can do and which help you live and which express you in various ways. Um, are, do you feel free to, to uh, move in all the ways you want to move? I could go into a coffee shop and actually pick up the cup with my mouth and carry it to my table, but then that that becomes almost more difficult because of the just the normalizing standards of our movements yes. and the discomfort that that causes when I do things with body parts that aren't necessarily what we assume that they're for. That seems to be even more um, hard for people to, to deal with. Is that somebody's shoe? Someone's shoe. I wonder if they can walk without it. Yeah. I'm just thinking that nobody takes a walk without there being a technique of walking. Yeah. Uh, nobody goes for a walk without there being something that supports that walk um, outside of ourselves. Mm -hmm. um, and that maybe we have a a, f a false idea um, that the able-bodied person is somehow radically self-sufficient. Yeah. It wasn't until I was in my early 20s, about 20 or 21, that I became aware of disability as a political issue. Um, and that happened largely through discovering the social model of disability, which is basically uh, in disability studies, they have a distinction between disability and impairment. Yeah. So impairment would be my my body, my embodiment right now. The fact that I was born with arthrogryposis, which affects, or what what the medical world has labeled as arthrogryposis, um, but basically that my joints are are, are 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 fused, my muscles are weaker, I can't move in certain ways, and. This does affect my life in mm -hmm. all sorts of mm -hmm. um, uh, situations. For instance, you know, there's a plum tree in my backyard. And I can't pick the plums off the plum tree. I have to wait for them to drop or whatever. Um, but then, and so there's that, there's that embodiment, um, our own unique embodiments. And then there's disability, which is basically the the social repression of, of disabled people. The fact that disabled people have limited housing options, we don't have career opportunities, um, we're socially isolated, we're 
um, you know, in many ways there's a cultural aversion to disabled people. Mm -hmm. So is, would disability be the social organization of impairment? The disabling effects, basically, of society. What happened? Did you come in contact with disability activists, or did you read certain things? I've re I, read a, I read a book review, actually. Oh, really? Yeah, I just read a book review, and, and when that happened, I lived in Brooklyn, and I would, I would really try to make myself go out and just order a coffee by myself. Yes. And I would sit for hours beforehand in the park, just trying to get up the nerve to do that. Oh. In a way, it's a political protest for me to go in and order a coffee and demand help simply because, in my opinion, help is something that we all need. Yes. And it's something that is, is, you know, looked down upon and not really taken care of in this society when we all, when we all need help yes. and we're all interdependent in yes. all sorts of ways. Should we stop and get me something warm? I don't know. How are you? That's pretty Let's fancy. go find something good. Yeah, I think it would probably fall off my shoulders. Although I guess we could try it on. Okay, so basically that's the back, yeah. So that would be... Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Other arm? Other arm. It's very stylish. Okay. It's kind of, you know, sporty and fancy. It's going to be a new show, it's Shopping with Judith Butler. <laughs> For the queer eye. <laughs> Maybe I can just get it while wearing it. Hey. Hi. Hi. We put the sweater on. Yeah, so, so it's, we just I'm actually buying this okay. one that I'm wearing. Um, so it's by weight. Um, oh, it's by weight? Yeah. Can we guess? I could probably just do it for four bucks. Let's that okay. sounds good. Here you go. Can we read the, the bills first and then sure. do the two? Oh, oh, I just, I just meant oh, to... You just, you just yeah, I just can't hold both at the same time. Thanks. There you go. Thanks. Thanks so much. I think gender and, and disability converge in a whole lot of different ways. Yeah. But one thing I think both movements do is get us to rethink um, what the body can do. There's an essay by the philosopher Gilles Deleuze called What Can a Body Do? Um, and the question is supposed to challenge um, the traditional ways in which we think about bodies, mm -hmm. right? We usually ask, you know, what is a body, or what is the ideal form of a body, or, you know, what's the difference between the body and the soul, and that kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, but what can a body do is, um, is, is a different question. It's, it, it isolates a set of capacities and a set of instrumentalities or actions, and we are kind of assemblages of those things. Mm -hmm. um, and I like this idea. It's, it's not like there's an essence, and it's not like there's an, an ideal morphology. You know, what a body should look like. It's exactly not that question. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> or what a body should move like. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the things that I found in thinking about gender and even violence against um, sexual minorities or gender minorities, people whose gender presentation doesn't conform with standard ideals of femininity or masculinity, is that very often um, it comes down to uh, you know how people walk, how they use their hips, what they do with their body parts, uh, what they use their mouth for, <laughs> what they use their anus for, or what they allow their anus to be used for. There's a guy in Maine who, I guess he was around 18 years old, and. Uh, he walked with a very um, distinct swish, you know, hips going one way or another, and very feminine walk. But one day, he was walking to school, and he was attacked by three of his classmates, and he was thrown over a bridge, and he was killed. 
And um, the question that community had to deal with, and indeed the entire media that covered this event, was, you know, how could it be that somebody's gait, that somebody's style of walking could engender the desire to kill that person? And that, you know, that makes me think about the walk in a different way. I mean, a walk could be a dangerous thing. I'm just remembering when I was little, when I did walk, I would be told that I walked like a monkey. Oh. And I think that for a lot of, of you know, disabled people, the violence and the, and the, the, the sort of, the, the hatred exists a lot in, in this um, reminding of people that our bodies are going to age and are um, going to die. And, you know, in some ways I wonder also just, you know, just thinking about the monkey comet, if it is also a level of, um, and this is just a thought off the top of my head right now, but just, um, the, the sort of where where our boundaries lie as as a human, and what becomes non-human. You well, know. it makes me wonder whether the person was anti-evolutionary. You know, yeah. maybe they <laughs> yeah. were creationists. Yeah, I don't. It's like, well, well, why shouldn't we have some resemblance to the monkey? I mean. <laughs> Well, the monkey's actually always been my favorite animal, too, so actually quite a lot of the time I was flattered. But, I, exactly. Yeah, yeah. But it, that, that when, when, when in those in-between moments of, you know, in-between male and, and female or in-between um, uh, death and, and health, when, when do you still count as a human? My sense is that what's at stake here is really rethinking the human as a site of interdependency. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, when you walk into the coffee shop, right, <laughs> if I can go back to that moment uh -huh. for a moment, and, and you, you ask for the coffee or you indeed even ask for some assistance with the coffee, um, you're basically posing the question, do we or do we not live in a world in which we assist each other? <laughs> yeah. Do we or do we not help each other with, with, with basic needs? And are basic needs there to be decided on as a social issue and not just my personal individual issue or your personal individual issue? So, I mean, there's a challenge to individualism that happens at the moment in which you ask for some assistance yeah. with the coffee cup. Yeah, yeah. And hopefully people will take it up and say, yes, I too live in that world yeah. in which I understand that we need each other in order to address our basic needs. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and I want to organize a social and political world on the basis of that recognition. Mm -hmm.